I will say it. You know the the set design of Drake and the Ninety Nine Dragons and this level specifically uh, have a lot more in common than you might think. Man, how much like propane does this place go through having that dragon shoot fire all day? <laughs> It goes through the entire country's supply every day. Every day they have to keep finding more. If you don't do the uh, the QT there, do you just get fucking blasted? I think you just sort of slam into it and die. You know, I think they just kind of, like, in that dragon, just have an old-timey laborer constantly shoving coal into it. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe, yeah, it's like a train instead of, like, a, like a more modern piece of tech. Mm-hmm. I'd believe it. Oh, I thought you were, like, cir- circumventing that you had to go down into that hole at the beginning of the level. But no, I guess this is the actual path. Yeah, so, I mean, we can't get in because we don't have a ticket. So we have to take the back way around. Okay. Which means that we go through, and it's weird to say this as, like, one of the last, like, big levels of the game. But we're going through the level that probably most uses the uh, the traversal tools that we've been given. Like, it feels like this was designed much earlier to show off all of the cool moves that Ruby has, mm-hmm. and then they, like, put it at the end. Yeah, this very much feels like something you would have shown off at, like, an E3 or something like that to, you know, announce the game and show away. off how cool it is. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was loving it. So I've never uh, done any crimes. Is this just what you have to do when you sneak into the movies? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry to say. Uh, also, this is the hardest to jump in the game. I'm just going <laughs> to note that. Uh, so <laughs> the I think I've shown this before, sort of. If you don't jump off at exactly the right place, it doesn't contextually like figure out what you're trying to do. So like you have to hit A oh at just God. the right point on there, which is... The latest point you can, which is not a lot of space to do it because it's broken. But yeah, that took me, I'd say, legitimately like a full minute to get. The the fact that you had to do a cut in there is (laughs) pretty incredible. I wish that was over a bottomless pit. I, I also had to cut because at one point I just pulled up someone else's walkthrough. Because I was like, I surely I'm doing something wrong here. And no, I wasn't, unfortunately. That very much feels like one of those things where playtesting got through that no problem, figured, well, there's nothing wrong here. (laughs) Right, yeah, like, they got it first try, and they're like, okay, nothing to fix here. We're all good. (laughs) Yeah, thankfully, everything else in this level is much more generous. Man, I'm just, like, screaming in my head, Ruby, go inside the opera house, please. (laughs) (laughs) She doesn't know where the fucking door is. <laughs> well, unfortunately, everything else is boarded up, and you can't possibly get through that. So we have to go through the giant window. Uh, yes, if you jump into the fire, it's instant, instant death. So don't worry about that. I'm sure the, that uh, metal she was holding on to isn't, like, incredibly hot to the touch due to being close to fire all day. No, it's gold, which, you know, uh, is a naturally, like, sort of resistant metal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, we've actually made it into the place now. And as you can tell, like, it's a little dilapidated. I don't know how they stay in business. Like, I don't know how anyone's getting through here. Uh, no, I've been a stagehand at a couple of shows before, and this is just kind of <laughs> accurate to how they are. Like, sure. there's a lot of wall running, a lot of, like, abusing, like, late-game mechanics to, like, go over gaps. Right. Um, yeah, that's, again, it's one of those where, like, it's basically like an invisible ledge. But, um, I don't use it, because, again, it, I don't notice it. And I think that that's the most interesting way to get over these large areas, honestly. That's a real cop-out, that you went under it and it still broke. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
I noticed early. I noticed earlier how there was there was actually some music, and then they decided that well, hey, you know, we can't loop that. That would be that would be no good. So hey, it's not like opera houses are associated with any one form of music, so it's fine, really. Yeah. Well, no, you guys, you see, we're here at the intermission. Good night, Gracie. Like Rupert Pelham got here late. You know, he made it for the end of the first act, and we're just here to ruin the second. Oh, no, uh, Ruby's gonna have to, like, dress up like, uh, she works it for the theater, and she's gonna go behind the snack counter and kill him. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, if, if we're in an intermission, why isn't there, like, a little jingle to go with that? Or the, just the sound of someone going out to get, like, their Chinese equivalent of a pack of milk duds or anything like that? Come on, Oh, uh, right? yeah, like, they should play, like, the Chinese version of Let's All Go to the Lobby. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, the well, only sustenance is. we need is whiskey. <laughs> it was in the whiskey all along. A lot <laughs> of right. alcohol being backstage at a show is pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, again, where this is a level that shows off the acrobatics, this is probably the best room in the game for also doing it during combat. It's like, it's just small enough to be able to, like, do wall runs and also, like, attack enemies, even if that fucking sword slash continues to be useless. Um, I think that it just, like, provides a good space with which to be able to use all of the moves you've been given. Like, other ones are just so big that you can't really take advantage, and I think this is an issue of the game as a whole. You can't really take advantage of a lot of the, like, wall running and stuff. It's basically just, like, jumping and sliding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I feel like that's a problem with a lot of like acrobatic like games with fighting in them is that they kind of just segment the acrobatics and the fighting. Right. Yeah, or when they do try to give opportunities for the acrobatic fighting, it all feels like it's set up in a way where it is very specifically there to let you use a specific ability or something like that, where the whole fun of the whole concept of acrobatic fighting is being able to do that like on the fly and have like, like that very dynamic kind of feel to it. And actually pulling that off is super fucking difficult. Yeah, it's definitely like a, a conflict that I think games like this have, and I it's very accentuated and wet, I think. Mm-hmm. VistaVision, the ultimate in film presentation. But the miracle of VistaVision was not achieved overnight or presented before perfection was reached. For years, scientists have been working in the world's greatest optical and electronic laboratories to develop this system that combines spectacular size with complete focus across the screen to bring you the perfect motion picture at last. Are you ready to rock, bitches? One, two, fuck you! Anyways, welcome to the show. We finally made it to act two of the of the performance here. <laughs> the, uh, the, like, th- the way she was talking, I was not expecting this music. <laughs> yeah, this is fucking limp. <laughs> Especially for a combat sequence. This is like Marty McFly at the prom and Back to the Future before <laughs> he starts playing Johnny Be Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a shame because I I think the promise of like doing stupid John Woo shit in like an actual Chinese opera is way cooler than doing John Woo shit at a karaoke bar, basically. Yeah, uh-huh. like the fact that also you can clear uh, you can clearly tell that she's just kind of doing la la laws that don't match the music is like such a missed opportunity. I like get excited every time this level, this part of the level starts because I'm like, oh, something cool is gonna happen. And then I get reminded that it's just like, whatever, you know? Yeah. Or like, even what if it was Rockabilly Opera? That would rule. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah like, that would be cool. The, the instrumental tracks, first of all, don't fit with each other at all. And what they actually are just sound like, 
like knockoff like sort of garage band presets like it just completely sucks on every level yeah yeah like you could find a female-led rockabilly band right there's got to be 800 of them yeah so like there's got to be something that you could pretend is within like the, the diegesis right like mm -hmm. i I think probably, to be fair, though, it's one of those budget things, because I, this was a Turk vs. Shooter in the Xbox 360 era. They probably just gave, like, a modest budget and were like, yeah, this will be a Halo killer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that sounds about right. I, I don't know. I, I If this was a John Woo Stranglehold, I bet this would be way cooler. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we saw in John Woo Stranglehold when we had to save the jazz band, every time one of them died, their instruments stopped playing in the instrumental. Yeah. So we know that it's possible. They just didn't do it. The, the closer you get to the band, the more pronounced it gets and the more sad I get listening to it. <laughs> well, don't worry. We had one rat boy. What if there was a rat girl? Oh wow. no! <laughs> Diversity win. <laughs> so the trick here is to not shoot at them. You're supposed to shoot at the speakers behind them, which kills the band one by one. I like that they and were. This happens. I love <laughs> them being in these weird Bioshock like vials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I want to perform for my band. There's a real hodgepodge of aesthetics going on here. Oh, that monkey was part of the band. You have to kill him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Anyways, unfortunately, as fun of, as all of this might have been, it's time to return to our roots of empty hallways because we're going backstage. I'd like that very, like, cut-off scream of just, Ugh! <laughs> It's just one of those things where it's like, you know, you don't time, you don't make multiple screams, so you have to time it to exactly how long the jump is. Mm-hmm. I am genuinely surprised that he is at all alive. Well, I think he's an informant. Hmm. You think so? I think he I think he ratted on us. Hmm. Oh, he became rat boy? <laughs> yeah, he became another rat boy. If he doesn't show up with a minigun, I'm gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> Unfortunately he was getting messaged anonymously on Xbox Live, tricking him into betraying us. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's like, oh gee, you're so good at COD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when he set up his when he set up his gamer profile, he sent himself to the underground zone. That's the, how they knew that he was legit. That's right. He just thought it was a cool gamer tag, but no, he entered the world of drug dealing online. He's like, "Oh, the Silk Road. That sounds like a nice place." Mm -hmm. That big mistake. I've been playing too much Splatoon. Every time I see the blood splatter on the ground, I'm like, oh, you should swim that to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're right back into another one of these. And this one, not half as good as the previous one. Are you sure? Because this song's way cooler. The song, I will say, certainly better. The build of this level, worse. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of has the thing that a lot of these levels has, is that it's just one big open room with a few, like, grapple points, and then that's just kind of it. Yeah, it's like a lot of areas where you have to walk while you're just getting shot. Yeah, and everyone can shoot you from every angle. Like, no matter where you are, you are getting constantly shot. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. I feel like you get score multipliers, but the people aren't dying. It's just like, oh, you shot them. Good job. <laughs> I think they just die very slowly. 
that's what happens as you get stronger in the mafia is eventually it's just like <laughs> it looks like you're not dying so you waste more time and bullets out of the enemy right that's why like in the godfather they have to shoot that guy for like 30 seconds in the car right so this one uh this level the only real difference is that the rat boy is already out at the beginning of the level <laughs> which again makes this harder because if you just, like, walk straight into this area, you get minigunned for, like, an hour and just die immediately. Also, this song is very much the closest to Ska we have gotten so far. I think that's beautiful. Oh, does Rat Boy need to go to the spot again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's getting in position. And his spot is on the other side, so if you haven't gone through here and already kind of cleared out some of the enemies, five guys will be ready to shoot you as you go after rap. What? <laughs> it's just, like, so bizarre. It would have been easier if he just went into his death anim or, like, his death state where he was standing. Yeah, I, I still don't necessarily understand. I guess it's to put you in a place that is theoretically more dangerous. But also, if he heals, he stands here and does the minigun thing again, and then you kill him, and then he walks over again. I, I have to figure that there has to be some kind of reason of, well, they couldn't get it to, like, reliably function at any point in the map or something like that. Go, go. Z, go are you hurt? It's just, they just came and they just came and there was... It's okay. Settle down. Are you hurt? No. They just came. I'm... Are you hurt? No, I, I, I don't think so. Go, go. Been... We need to get you out of here before more of these bastards just... show up. Give, give me a second. Z, there's no time. Oh, the demoto. Ruby, why? why? Why is this happening? Too late. Hello, Ruby. Shit! <laughs> you... Fascinate me, you know that? I'm fucking thrilled. <laughs> you, you come into my house, my home, my castle. You stir things up, and, and then you expect to just walk out. That fascinates me. You and your little monkey guns, and you're, you're, you're jumping up and bumping around. You've got a set of balls, and that's what fascinates me. I'm sorry, Ruby. I'm so sorry. Never underestimate the power of feeling good. Uh, next, um, the guy in the fisherman's hat is gonna uh, stab you with one of his lures. <laughs> <laughs> God, if Milo betrayed us, I don't know what I'd do. The Ruby fandom would be up in arms. <laughs> <laughs> This is very out of character for Milo. We all know that he's a twerp. <laughs> Milo definitely looks like the kind of motherfucker that would get cancelled. <laughs> oh, did I wake you? Sorry about that. I've heard you've been causing us some trouble. Shame on you. Are you working for William Ackers? Is that it? Fuck you. I work for myself. What's your name? Christopher Sorrell. Why'd you ask? Because, Christopher Sorrell, when this is over, I'm gonna make you beg me for your life. <laughs> You've come to the wrong house asking for sugar, darling. Now, my cupcake. I'm gonna find out why. Why are you here? Hmm? I'm a people person. <laughs> Why are you here? Hey! You need a breath mint, you know that? Who else knows you're here? Your wife, and she's jealous. You've got some explaining to do when you get home! <laughs> I don't know who you are, darling, but I've lost interest. Finish her off, and then do whatever you want to her. You son of a bitch! Go fucking blow yourself! How do you want it, motherfucker? Anyways, that was fun. 
So uh, this level is very short, as you might notice by the oh. three monkeys <laughs> sitting next to each other. Man. Why'd they even... They could have just not had any monkeys. They just had the one. Well, you gotta put the monkeys in the level. Otherwise, it's not a wet level. Well... I mean, you say short, but the promise of three monkeys means this level is gonna be good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And you know what? Here's number four, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I, I can just imagine them having coded it such that they literally cannot have a level without the monkeys in it. And so some level designer was just like, fucking, okay, so, okay, well... Lump them in there, I, I suppose. Fuck it. Like, what we don't see at every wet level is that there are, like, hundreds of monkeys spawned out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every traditional level, uh, all of the monkeys are, like, load-bearing. Like, if they're not there, it just breaks the code. It, it's like that uh, F1 racing game built on, like, a Madden engine where it always has, like, a field goal under the geometry because <laughs> otherwise the game will break. <laughs> That's so cool. I would love if one of these scenes happened, and then Ruby like just took a deep breath and was like, "Okay, I'm all right." <laughs> <laughs> cookie breathing, cookie breathing. Just to show respect to America, uh, instead of calling this rage mode, they should call it patriot mode for this level. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. God bless America. So uh, this level is similar to the other ones, but it's more of a puzzle, and I, I, I say that with the strongest scare quotes I can possibly. Um, basically, unlike all the other levels where you can tackle it in any order, there is a very specific order in which you need to do all of the um, the door blocking in this. Oh, okay. I kind of thought like, when I was watching the cutscene, I was like, eh, that seems like what it's indicating, but that would be stupid if they did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. They're doing it. So yeah, we're constantly going to be in, like, hopping between sides, and the fact that this inexplicably takes place in, like, a train station will be important. Are, I guess we don't know where we are right now. I was like, are we still in Hong Kong? I mean, like, who knows? It's a mystery. Yeah, yeah. who could say? If only there was some sort of, like, writing on any of these locations that maybe gives us some clue, some concept Well, I can't we read are. any of it. How am I supposed to know what it says? I guess you're right. Anyway, so as you saw, now that we've finished two, we now have been given the power to control the trains. <gasps> and under Ruby's control, the trains will always run on time. I hope they run on these bad guys. <laughs> well, I've got good news. It is a physics object. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what gaming is all about. That's right. It's about uh, crashing trains in order to make ladders fall. So yeah, literally the entire reason we did this is so we could walk up and use this ladder which fell down so that we could close a different door. I think, in general, uh, like, more video games should have every... Uh, like reaction to your action be train based oh that would be good like you know in the, in halo instead of having like the giant halo ring what if it was like a giant train that you had to deal with right or on the halo there was a giant train going around it right yeah what if master chief was a train oh <laughs> mm. oh they'd call a master train or what that's if right. our master conductor Oh, that's yeah. true. That's also true. <laughs> God, they just, like, evaporate. <laughs> yeah. They're turned into mist by the train. <laughs> Once again. That's right, because this is the train to Brigandine. Like, imagine Gears of War, the classic. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, character, cool. Manito's the cool train. What if he transforms into an actual train for it? <laughs> Think about yeah, it. Yeah, he's like a Thomas the Tank Engine style. Yeah, he's, he's still got his face on it. Hell is coming. Hell is coming. 
Anyways, it's time to catch the real train. Uh, this is so we can get up to the minigun. Because we've also got a minigun oh. section, folks. <laughs> they didn't even make you walk that time. Nope. Have we become Rat Boy? <laughs> I feel like in this sort of mood, we're all Rat Boy a little bit. Yeah. Rat Boy is <laughs> looking down at us from heaven, smiling. <laughs> yeah, so note as the train moves, people do die as the uh, the track hits them, or as the uh, tanker hits them. It's a Rat Boy world, we're just living in it. It's true. Anyways, we level by exploding it. Man, we're doing all types of gimmicks. Yeah. Because <laughs> let me tell you, this next one, there's more of them. Welcome back to High Speed Chasing. Now we're going to play in uh, that one Queens with the Stone Age music video. That's right. <laughs> Ruby's just in rage mode for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, at this point, uh, I get it. Yeah, she got betrayed by a gamer, like I would as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is what gamers do when they get betrayed by other gamers. Wow, it is mm -hmm. very hard to tell when a guy is, like, leading out of the car to shoot at you. Mm -hmm. A little bit. But yeah, I call this a heated anti-gamer moment. <laughs> I will say, this is probably the quietest road I've ever seen in Hong Kong. I feel like she should try to steal one of those motorcycles. Uh, it's difficult. I don't think she has a license for it. Oh, oh she doesn't have a helmet also. That's true. And she's very careful about that. Uh, most of this uh, level is biker hooligans. Well, what you didn't see is that a road rash uh, tournament was going on. Right. It turns oh, out also the Hells Angels was doing a world tour. <laughs> also, that bike was turned into a pillar of smoke. It was driven by Satan. <laughs> also, I like how this car that we're surfing now has a little mustache. Oh yeah, he's got the little like uh, got like little horns on the front. No, you're right. It's probably more of a mustache. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say it was like the bullhorn kind of thing, but it is way too small for it to be that. Yeah, plus it's way too, like, well-kept, I yeah. think. Like, this is very clearly a handlebar. So you know that this is a country boy. I love how many characters in these sections are just willing to fucking die <laughs> for the chance to, like, run us into a car. Anyways, you may guess, this is an important character. That's right, this is Jun Lee from the previous chapter, the guy who ran in the fucking uh, ice factory heist. <laughs> Wait, what? Who? Uh, he showed up for, like, exactly one minute to tell other guys to kill us. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. He, he, yeah. he got on the boat. Yes. One of the three pillars of the Pelham operation. That's another thing about this game, is they just sort of introduce characters and expect you to remember them or care about them. I think when I think when you've spent more time with Milo than the villains of your story, I think that that's a problem. I was about to say literally the two character names I remember are Ruby and Milo. Well, I need no more information than that. <laughs> you have narrowed it down. <laughs> Look, London's small enough. We can figure it out. 
Honestly, they're probably all stuck in that queue anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and next time, we'll join the line too, as we go to the finale of WET.